Hi guys and welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things witchcraft, tarot and books. I am looking a little bit tired today and I think I'm starting to come down with something because I couldn't be bothered to put any makeup on or anything so it is what it is but let's just move on. So today I'm going to be talking about some of the September releases. Here we are. Some of the September releases coming from Running Press Mystic this month. Um, so if you saw my welcome back video then you know how this usually works um, and how my relationship with Running Press works but basically quick summary every month they will send me a list of their upcoming titles and I will choose a couple of books or oracle decks or whatever that I would like to review or feature on my YouTube or on Instagram or other social media whatever. Usually I do only pick a book a month or an oracle deck a month or something like that but this month there was just so much good stuff that they're releasing um that i did get a little bit of a haul of it as you just saw i hate that word but that's the only word i could think of to describe it just a little disclaimer all that good stuff basically they're running press send me the books for free they don't have any control over the posts i make or any content that i post about them so it's all completely my own opinion so there are four books in total then that i'm going to share with you and these little uh, mini kits as well which i'm going to tell you a little bit more about but just as a little bit of a disclaimer, I haven't actually read any of the books um, that I'm sharing with you. I've just done a little bit of a flick through and a little bit of a preliminary explore of the book, I suppose. So this isn't a review video. It's more me sharing these books with you and a little bit of information about them and just my initial first impressions, that sort of thing. Because there are four of them. I. I don't think or I know I'm not going to have time to read them all and review them all before they come out um, so I didn't want to be sort of like waiting and waiting to share them with you so I thought this would be a really good way to do it just to introduce you to them share a little bit of information um, and then you can decide you know if you would like to check any of them out. First up then we have Enchanted Foraging Wild Crafting for Herbal Remedies Rituals and a Magical Life by Ebony Gahorga and illustrated by Heather Powers. I hope I've said that right, Gahorga. I did have to Google it because I wasn't sure. To me, it looks like um, George with a couple of extra H's in there. Um, but if I'm still pronouncing that wrong, then I apologize. Um, so yeah, this is the beautiful book. I don't know why I have to stroke it, but there you go. I, I do tend to do that a lot. It did arrive slightly damaged as well. It's only a, a little bit, but um, you know, it is what it is. I think it was just not um, under all the packaging. It was like on top of the packaging. I just want to share a little bit about the author then. So there's a little bit of an author profile in the back. Ebony Gahorga has an, an academic background in geology and environmental sciences, which naturally informed her love for wild resources, herbalism and plants. She runs her own business, Nettles and Bees, selling balms, crystals, hair oils, and other products made from forage materials. When she's not working as a lab technician, she offers foraging workshops for children and adults. And she lives in Oxfordshire with her husband and daughter. Enchanted Foraging is her first book. Okay, so lovely little explanation there. And then also I'm going to share a little bit about the blurb on the back of the book. So it says, Nature as a source of magic and wellness all year round, from identifying plants to using them in herbal remedies and crafts. Enchanted Foraging offers a friendly guide for anyone looking to cultivate a more meaningful relationship with the natural world, exploring its abundance, hidden applications, and how it makes enchanted beings of us all. I'll just share a little bit of inside the book with you then. So like I said, I haven't read the whole thing all the way through, but I have had a look through, um, just read some different sections um, and had a, a quick sort of look to some first impressions. So the bit that I think is quite important, sorry, I've just knocked the camera there, is this bit. So beginning your, beginning your foraging journey. Um, so these sort of topics here are sort of essential reading for beginners so when you're first going into this so for example the first things first has got really important information about just you know not eating things um, or trying things when you don't really know what they are some information about sustainability um, just respecting nature and also the law as well so you know not trespassing um, while you're doing your foraging etc she also talked a little bit about location so thinking about if um, the things that you're foraging are near pollutants and things just general really good advice and tips that 
you probably haven't thought about but are all really worth considering. The second part of the book then after the, the sort of key information is organised by the seasons. So it starts with autumn. So I'm going to share a little bit or read a little bit about the autumn section. So it's got, as I've said, some really beautiful little illustrations in there as well. And I'll just show you the autumn one because I feel like in the UK at the moment, we are just going into autumn. So it seems quite apt um, to share that. So if it'll just focus, that's a little illustration there. And I'm just going to read a little bit of what it says about autumn because I think it gives you just a really good vibe for the book um, and, and what it's about. Autumn crosses between the late growing season and early dormant season for plants and vegetables. With autumn comes the falling of temperature and, tra and transition begins. Days are shorter, delicate young shoots grow and fall back as the weather changes. Many leaves start to lose their green chlorophyll pigmentation and turn into tones of yellow, brown and red until they eventually fall. Animals begin preparing for colder nights and scarcer times. We can still find some greens during autumn and even into winter because not all the herbaceous plants will be resting. Some plants are late flowering, meaning that they bloom later in the year. Oxeye daisy, St. John's wort, campion, lemon balm, white clover and mints, for example, may still be found despite the cold weather. Our association with autumn can be seen as one of balance, the preparation of things during a transitional stage. We can feel this intuitively when we walk outside in the crisp, fresh cold that requires us to wear layers, and in the gorgeous fiery hues of leaves on trees just before they fall. For me, autumn is a time to evaluate what we should let go of, or what we should preserve to bring balance to our lives. Transitions in nature mirror our own transitions in life. Like animals in autumn, this can be a time for us to start preparing for change and what's to come. And I just think that really shows you how beautiful the writing style is as well. Um, and it highlights that magicalness behind foraging. So yeah, really lovely. So as I said, each season, each season then, it just explores um, things that you can forage. So roots um also if i just show you as well um lots of different things but also foliage and flowers so different things that are available through different seasons that you can forage how to harvest them how to store them um as well as how they can be used so she will share herbal remedies um tinctures balms poultices uh, tonics so lots of different ways that you can use the things that you forage the chapters then they do also end with um, some traditions and rituals um, that are relevant to that particular season after just that first little look through of the book I am really excited to read a little bit more um, I think for me it's also about working with um, what's in your local area too um, and that is going to be different for everyone so working with what's close to you and what's available this does look like a really great beginner friendly book so for anyone that is interested in getting started in foraging or using what's available to you um, in your local area um, in your magic then it looks like it's going to be a really great one for that I think I did forget to mention when this one comes out so just in case I forgot to say it, it does come out on the 28th of September moving on to the second book then so we have Take Back the Magic Conversations with the Unseen World by Padita Finn. Um, again, this is another beautiful book cover. It's still got that sort of natural nature imagery on there as well. So, in the back of the book, we've got again another little author profile. And it says, Padita Finn is the co-founder with her husband, Clark Strand, of the non-denominational international fellowship, The Way of the Rose, which inspired their book, The Way of the Rose, The Radical Path of the Divine Feminine Hidden in the Rosary. In addition to extensive study with Zen masters, priests, rabbis, shamans and healers, she apprenticed with the psychic Susan Saxman, with whom she wrote The Reluctant Psychic. Finn now teaches popular workshops on getting to know the dead, in which participants are empowered to activate the magic in their own lives with the help of their ancestors. She lives with her family in the moss-filled shadows of the Catskill Mountains. I'm just going to share a little bit about the blurb as well, just so that you've got an idea as to what this one is about. What if we could live in a world where the guidance of those who were gone was available right at our very fingertips? It's possible if we are open to it. 
Anyone can reclaim the forgotten guidance of the dead and anyone can return to the realm of magic and miracles. In Take Back the Magic, Conversations with the Unseen World, author, spiritual teacher and co-founder of The Way of the Rose, Perdita Finn reveals that life is beginningless, love is endless and those who have passed don't truly go anywhere when they die. Weaving together memoir, history and a non-denominational spirituality based in ecology, Finn takes the reader on a journey of healing, possibility and love as she reveals the story of mending her relationship with her bitter father long after his death. Along the way, readers will learn how they too can reconnect with the generous guidance of the soul's long story through deep time, recovering... Sorry, it continues at the back. Um, so, recovering their lost relationship with their ancestors and the earth itself. Throughout, Finn shares guidance, tips and practical advice that will aid readers in forging their own relationship with those who have passed, as she invites every reader to reconnect with their own inner knowing and to call forth magic from the most ancient parts of humanity. Okay, so that's a little bit of a blurb about this one. I will say though, The Way of the Rose, which like it said, is also by Petita, Petita Finn and her husband has been on my wish list for a long while. And it's one that I keep meaning to pick up because um, yeah, it just sounds really interesting to me. This one, um, I will say, it's probably not a book that I would usually pick for myself. Um, but there was a Running Press Mystic event a while ago. I think it was during the summer solstice they did a little event. Um, and Padita did read a passage from the book. And from that, it did intrigue me. I did want to maybe go out of my comfort zone a little bit and read something a little bit different that I wouldn't usually. Um, so yeah, this was the, the one that I went with. As with the other one, I haven't read this all the way through. I've just had a little look through it again, which is a little bit more difficult because as you can see, it is a lot more in depth and detail and there's a lot more reading involved in this one. Just to share a few first impressions of this one then, which I admit is a little bit difficult after I've only read a few sections. Um, and just from the little bit that Padita had read at the Running Press event, um, I can say that this is a, a deeply personal book for her. Um, she does share a lot of herself and her life in this one. and But I do always love that in books, especially sort of these kind of books, these magical kinds. I do like to know about the author and how they incorporate the magic that they talk about into their own, own lives as well. So I just think it makes it more authentic to see how the authors are using what they're talking about, the personal stories um, in relation to the magic that they're sharing and the wisdom that they're imparting as well. I did say that this book is probably not something that I would have picked up for myself, mainly because of the conversations with the dead or the ghosts and things. It's still something that I've not explored or I'm not sure what my feelings are about it. However, for this one, it was more the memoir style. Um, or that aspect of the book that was appealing to me and like I said I did want to read it because it might make me uncomfortable it might be something that I'm not familiar with but sometimes that's what you need um, and so yeah I, I'm really excited to give it a go now as well as that memoir aspect and the author sharing her own personal stories there are other things in there that you can include in your own spiritual practice so there's things about ancestor altars collaborating with the dead and using your intuition, your dreams um, and other messages as well. It's definitely going to be a different one for me, but like I said, it's still one that I am very intrigued to read, okay? And if I haven't already mentioned again, it's already out this one. So it came out this week, it came out on the 12th of September. So yeah, if that's one that's interesting to you or one that you wanna check out, then that's already available. Next up then, we have this one, which is another beautiful cover. In fact, I think this one is probably my favorite cover out of the ones that we've got today. Um, but yeah, this is Shadow Magic. Unlocking the Whole Witch Within, and this is by Nikki Bandekar and um, illustrated by Kwa Lee. Again, I did have to Google how to pronounce that and I'm really sorry if I said it wrong. Um, but yeah, so I'll just share a little bit about this one then. So um, Nikki Bandekar, it should have some information in the back. She is a blogger, mother, writer, crafter and lover of all things mystical. She is the best-selling author of more than a dozen books on magic and crafting for adults and children, including Practical Magic, Wellness Witch, Ritual and the Junior Witch's Handbook. And she's the founder of two popular knitting blogs, 
Nikki lives with her family in Hawaii. So actually I do have another um, I have reviewed another of Lit Nikki's books before. Um, so this one, sorry, there's a lot of glare on that. So The Witchy Homestead. Um, so I do have a review of that one. It wasn't one that was necessarily for me. It is a really beautiful book and it's got some really beautiful ideas in there. But actually when, I'm just gonna try and slide it back in. When I did um, see this one, cause I do like sort of Nikki's writing and her style and things. That's one thing that I do like about the book and she has written a lot. So this one just really stood out to me just because of the title, cause Shadow Magic is something that I suppose it can be seen as being quite recent um, of a, a thing in magic, I suppose. Um, but yeah, it's, it really gets my attention. So I am excited for this one. So let's have a look at what the blurb says. Each of us contains joy and fear, laughter and sorrow, brightness and shadow. And while we may often feel pressure to show only our sunniest moments, there is magic and energy and potential in the shadow. And we cannot be the fullest expression of ourselves at our most powerful unless we embrace and em embrace and embody all that we are. Shadow magic is your enchanted guide to, uncover to uncovering, understanding and celebrating your own shadow. Through explorations of the moon, dream magic, symbology, tarot, candle rituals and more, best-selling author Nikki Vandekar teaches us to work with the shadow rather than trying to suppress or ignore it, allowing each of us to uncover the whole integrated witch within. So as I've done then, I'll share a little bit of um, the chapters with you. The shadow, symbology, the unseen, the moon, dream magic, and lastly, protection magic. So again, I have had a little look through this, a little flip through, a read of a couple of chapters, um, or little sections, I suppose, not the full chapter, just little sections of things that stood out to me that I just was interested in. So first thing that I noticed, I'll just show you a couple of beautiful illustrations in there as well, is this bit. And I have shared this on my Instagram as well because it stood out to me, if you can see. So all the way through the book, there's this little section. So light a candle for, and then there will be a different witch, either from literature, from folklore, from history, um, and just a little bit of information about them. So for me, there was one that stood out and that was Morgan Le Fay. I won't go into it too much, but it's basically been someone that's been, she's appeared a lot recently for me. So that's what I've taken as a little bit of a sign. So yeah, that was a really nice touch throughout the book. And at the beginning, um, when she's doing the introduction, I suppose, introducing exactly what the shadow is, um, I found that to be really good and really interesting as well because a lot of people talk about, you know, shadow magic, the shadow self or doing shadow work, etc. And are not quite sure of where it's come from or where it stemmed from. So that was all really great. Um, I love the fact that she refers to uh, Jekyll and Hyde as well because I think that was one of sort of the earliest like literature references to this this dual personality this dual self etc but she does also talk about the psychology and things behind it so the theories from Carl Jung etc so after the initial explanation of shadow magic and what working with the shadow is then she goes on to share to share some ideas about how you can use it and how you can work with it so symbolism and different symbols that have been used throughout magic etc I didn't really look at that chapter as much um I did move on to the next chapter which is called the unseen um, and it's exploring shadow magic in terms of different divination practices so I was really interested to see how she would explore shadow magic and tarot so I did definitely have a look at that section and a read of that section let's just have a look if I can find it for you yeah there it is so cartomancy so um, a little bit of an explanation of the tarot there. So it was a little bit disappointing, if I'm honest, just that little section that I did read. So it was an explanation of what tarot is and the history and how tarot, tarot is used just in general, rather than specifically to shadow magic and shadow work. I was hoping that there would be more depth to it um, and very specific links of how you can use tarot with your shadow magic, if that makes sense, rather than just those tarot basics. The chapter about dreams though did look really promising and really interesting. And it is something that I myself have already been working with and doing in my practice. So exploring my dreams just for 
for that subconscious symbolism and things but then also trying to link it to more shadow work um, and it does seem to fit quite easily together. As well as all that then throughout the book there are different spells for creativity, intuition and self-love and it is still one that I am really interested in and I, I have do plan like I said on reading all the books through in, in full um, before I make any sort of major judgment about them. So this one again is due out let me just double check. Um, this one's due out on the 26th of September. The last book then is not technically a book. So this is Everyday Magic, a perpetual journal for spiritual seekers. And this is by Maya Toll and it's been illustrated by John Carling. And before I forget, the release date is the 28th of September. If you are, you know, a regular here or over on my Instagram, then you will know that I have reviewed or shared a lot of Maya's work, um, just because I love all of the projects that she she's producing and putting out there. So I will share a little bit of the blurb for this one then. Record your learnings from tarot and astrology to the healing powers of plants in this beautiful perpetual journal. The world of the mystic is vast and full of information, observations and personal revelations to keep track of. In Everyday Magic, award-winning author Maya Toll invites you to create your own enchanted reference filled with the knowledge that's important to you and organised by topic areas so you can easily add notes when the magic strikes. So Maya has said, and I think this is something that I saw on um, her Instagram page, that she didn't want this journal to look like a book. She, she didn't want the title or anything to be written on there with her name and things. And I think that is actually really great because if you do take off this sort of front, I don't know what you call that, whatever it is, but if you take that off, then it does look like um, a journal, just a regular journal. Obviously, it's got the beautiful illustrations on there. And I think, you know, obviously, if you're taking this out and about with you to everyone else, it's just going to look like a journal or a notebook, um, a really beautiful journal or notebook, as you can see. It's beautifully illustrated. Even though it is a journal, it does have some bits and pieces in it, okay? So I'll just share with you again the little contents here. So if you can see that, if it's going to focus, it's got a lot of contents on there and you probably think it's got a lot of stuff in there, but actually those, the way that it works is those contents are for you. So cycles, systems, symbols and correspondences, rituals, dreams, etc. It's got loads and loads of stuff in there, but the idea is that you fill that information in for yourself. If I show you, if I can find a really good example, uh, we'll go with systems. So it has a little title page there for systems. And then within that, we might have astrology. So it does have a little bit of information on there. It's a little illustrations of this, the symbols of the, the zodiac and things. But then for the signs of the zodiac, it's got um, the space where you can write your own information and that's the same throughout the book again so if I can just find another one um, the tarot one is always a good one I suppose so if I just go to the tarot section so here a little bit of um, if it'll focus a little bit of information about the tarot and then obviously it's got the space for you to record your own personal information about each of the tarot cards so again you can get that from wherever you want you can get that from books you can get that from the internet um it's entirely up to you but i think as well for me the good thing about this is that you can put your own personal references as well so it does work like a grimoire or a book of shadows or however you record your magical musings or information basically i have tried to do this before and i, I have got you know my book of shadows, my grimoire, whatever. I've got all of those notebooks, uh, those notebooks, um, and they are very, they're organized to an extent, but not this organized, if that makes sense. So I think for me, the idea is that, and Maya does say this as well, it does say this a little bit in the beginning, that it is in, it's not linear. It is not in, you don't start at the beginning and um, just write all the way to the end. You are going to be dipping in and out of little sections. So the idea is to add to the little sections as you're going along. I did, like I said, I did read a little bit. I can't remember specifically, but she did give, give a really good example of how it could be used. So again, this is very much paraphrased. For example, if you 
go to bed at night, you have a dream um, and it has various symbols in there, you know, like we were saying with um, shadow magic. So you've had a dream, it's got various symbols in there. You can go into the book and there's a section where you can maybe record your dream. But then there's also a section where you can record information about those symbols. So maybe it had some colour correspondences in there or you went away and did a little bit of research on a particular bird that appeared in your dream. Sorry, I just said bird because it had a bird on the front. Um, and the symbolism behind that, then you can record that somewhere. And because of that, contents page at the beginning if you ever want to reference anything or cross-reference anything then it's all really easy to come back to i did want to share this one because you know from the title a journal you you might get the impression that you know it's just a book with loads of lines in and you just fill it in as a regular journal but to me i think it's so much more than that it's just the the opportunity to work with this and to record your practice is just, I feel like it's just a really great resource to use. I'm always in a great support of all of Maya's work and all of her projects. And I just think this was a really lovely idea as well. So again, if you're interested in this one, this is out on the 28th of September. Right, lastly then, I just wanted to share a little bit about these um, little magical tools or minis as Running Press call them. Um, I have unblurred the background, as you can see. I don't know why I chose to do it right at the end of the video because nothing has been focusing because of that blur um I don't know if I prefer it do I prefer it unblurred let me know I think I might just do it unblurred in the future because it was just wasn't focusing on anything so yeah basically I'm going to share these little magical tools with you so running press have been doing these for a while sort of their mini series it's not something I've shared with you before um although I have used some of them so for example um on my altar I have, this is my little charging station for various things, but I'm currently charging um, this little uh, pendulum, which I got as a mini, um, and I'm really looking forward to using this. I've, I've only just uh, started charging it because I've only just got around to reading the guidebook, but in the little book that comes with it, it shares so many different ways that you can use a pendulum that I just didn't even know about in the first place. So I'm excited to start with that. But that was one of the first ones that I got. It, it's already out. It's been out for a while. I've just never shared. But yeah, it's it's in its little charging pot on my altar at the moment. This one is a magic bell. Now I have used a bell in my practice before, mainly just for cleansing. Um, so this one, it says it's a mini magic bell and I did write down the creators and authors of this one because it doesn't necessarily always tell you on the box. The text, so there is a little book in there as well, I'll share that in a second, is by Astria Taylor and it's also been illustrated by Hall Ye Webb. This came out on the 5th of September so it is already out now so if you're wanting to have a look at this then you can. So I'll just show you the inside, I've just taken the guidebook out, let me put it back in and show you what it looks like. So yeah, all the minis come in these cute little boxes and they're magnetic and they just open and then you've got your tool or whatever in there and then you do get this little book as well. Now at first you might look at this book and you think, oh well that, that looks a bit small, there's not going to be much information in there. But like I said, when I was reading the guidebook about the pendulum, it told me more than I really knew in the first place. It shows you lots of different ways that you can use your magical tool. So rituals and spells, cleansing, like I said, that's one thing that I already knew um, with that, but then also a ritual to use your bell with intention, um, sound wave spell to cleanse and bless a ritual space, um, there's rituals for new beginnings, and then it also looks like there's um, some rituals and things to use with your tarot cards. So yeah, even though it is a small little guidebook, I think it is a really nice introduction as well. I'll just open this just to show you what it looks like. I have not opened this yet. I'm taking it out because I was saving it for the video. But yeah, this is the little, the little bell. It's very cute. It's got the little um, elemental symbols on there. It is only small, but it is, like I said, it is, it's very beautiful. And I think it's something that's really nice to have on your altar, especially if it's something that you're interested in working with. And that's the reason that I chose it because I have, like I said, worked with um, a bell for cleansing before, but I just wanted maybe to just explore how I could use it for other things as well. So it's just a really good way into it. 
Um, so that's that one. Like I said, that one is already out now. Next up then is some Spellwork Dice. Mix up your magic. And these ones, I'll just have a look, by Sophie St. Thomas and illustrated by Lively Scout. So again, 5th of September these came out, so they're already out. And it's just like, exactly like the other ones, you've got the little section with the magical tool in it and this lovely little guidebook, which I can't get out. So the little guidebook then obviously shows you how to use the dice. I'm just gonna get them out and have a little look because again, I've not actually done that yet. Um, and I think, there we go. So, it's got, I don't know what that is. Oh, oh, they've all fallen out. Oops, one second. Sorry, they'd all dropped on the floor, but I've managed to, I've managed to collect them. Um, so yeah, there's these little, little dice with these little symbols on them. They're really actually quite beautiful. They're like a wooden, a wooden dice um, with the pictures printed on there. So different colours with lots of different symbols. I'll try and show you them all. I can't hold them all. There you go. So I have just had a little bit of a look through the guidebook because I didn't really know much about these dice. I probably should have done this beforehand, but it does look really interesting. So for example, each of the dice um, are numbered. So the red one is setting your intention. The orange one is the magic type that you're going to be using. The third one is the magical tool that you will use. And then the fourth one is the a magical tip. So for example, you can roll your first dice and it will set help you to set your intention. I think obviously the, the reason that you would use these in itself is a type of divination, I suppose. So maybe it would make you aware of something that you need or that you need to perform that you weren't aware of yourself in the first place. So for example, the intention, is it going to be love? Is it going to be passion, money, protection? confidence, healing. So you roll that first red dice and that's going to tell you what exactly the spell is going to be for, the intentions behind it. And then dice number two, as I said, number is the magic type. So it could be, are you going to use divination? Are you going to use astrology? Are you going to use some kitchen witchery or glamour magic? There's, there's loads more in there as well. So that's what the the second dice is for. Number three then is a tool that you might use. So for example, are you going to use tarot cards? Are you going to use candles? Incense, create a potion. Are you going to use crystals, different moon phases? So that's the blue one that will tell you a specific tool that you are going to use in the spell. And then lastly, which I think this one is a really nice one, is a magical tip. So it's got different symbols on there and it shows you what each one is. So for example, are you going to perform the spell on a specific day of the week? Are you going to call upon an ancestor? Or are you going to work with a specific deity um, or an element? So it just shows you the elements there as well. And I think that's a really nice one that I necessarily sometimes forget um, or you know, just don't even consider. So is there a specific deity that would work really well with that spell? So that dice is telling you that, you know, you need to go out and you need to find out who that is, basically. The last little thing that I wanted to share with you is this one, the Mystical Journaling Kit. So you might notice that this does actually go with the journal from Maya Toll. Um, so it's got very similar illustrations on there um, as well. So they they do they are sold separately so you can buy this to go with this so i'll just share with you a little bit about what it is but you might even think you know what i'd like that on its own just because it is it is really cute so if i open it up you will see that it's empty because i have already used this one so it's got the little guidebook as with the other ones um and it just shares with you um how you can use it in your journal but it is quite expensive self-explanatory this one when you see what it is so I've put it in this little tub like I said I've already started using this one just because it's so cute so you do get some little stickers I haven't used those yet but um let me see if I can get them all out together or am I going to be able to hold them all 
So this is what they are. So you may be able to notice straight away if I can balance them on top that these are moon phases. They are also stamps. So you can stamp them into your journal um, and then it comes with this cute little golden um, ink as well. So as you can see, I've already started using them. So you just stamp. I did test them out, but then I've also, I've got my diary out and I've just stamped all the different moon phases um, throughout the month. And I think in terms of the journal, it might be good for you just even if you just, so say for example, you do a ritual um, on the full moon and you want to record that, then you can just put a little stamp next to it to say when that was done. But I'm just keeping them in this little, oops, this little tin at the moment because I just have them on my desk on hand for when I need them. Okay, that's everything I've got to share with you today then guys. So these four beautiful books and the magical tools are all coming from Running Press this month. Some of them are already out and the others are available for pre-order. If you are interested in, in any of these or you would like to buy any of these and support the channel, then you can use my affiliate link for bookshop.org. I will put all the details down in the description. Okay, thank you so much for watching guys and I will see you in the next video.